Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Grand Tactician The Civil War, a new strategy and tactics war game available on Steam and developed by Oliver Keppelmuller. Uh, in today's stream or video, depending on if you're watching this on Twitch or YouTube, uh, we will be returning to a series we've been running for a while, but it's been a little bit since our last episode. I was out sick for a while, lost my voice for a while, uh, and then I just went down a Kingdom Come Deliverance rabbit hole, which I'm not sure if you guys would want to watch me stream or not. I'm a pretty grindy player on a game like that. Uh, so we kind of got away from this uh, for a little while. Um, but we are returning to our Confederate Let's Play series. In this war, you may recall, the war in the West is going fairly well. We had taken St. Louis, but we basically convinced Missouri, or at least the portions of it that we occupied to join the Confederacy. Uh, we have tried to sort of foray our way into Kentucky, but haven't had a ton of success. There's a large grouping of Union armies near Columbus, which I'm going to see if we can try and converge on in today's episode. But in the East, things have been going really well. We took Washington, D.C., we took Baltimore, uh, and we are uh, threatening federal troops, which look like they have pulled back to the Gettysburg area uh, in the East, although our troops and armies there need to pause for a while because they are you know, they have pushed past their their natural supply points, if you will. And so they do need some time to regroup, if you will. Uh, but overall, the war is going well for us as the Confederacy. We probably should raise some more troops. We do have a good healthy credit rating. Uh, and uh, why don't we do that right now? Let's go ahead and raise some troops at, at the Army of Virginia, which was largely uh, a... Uh, regular force. Uh, but let's go ahead. We've got a division under Patton a Anderson. Uh, we've got one brigade of troops with mixed muskets already. I believe they're, are they volunteers? I guess they are. I thought they were regulars, but they're volunteers down there. Uh, looks like a unit of 2,200 troops. We'll give them Springfield rifle muskets. And then we're going to go ahead and raise some new troops as well so that we can dispatch some of these guys to the front. Looks like we got about 4,400 volunteers in the great state of Virginia. Uh, so we'll go ahead and raise one uh, brigade of infantry there. We'll also give them Springfield rifled muskets, which we've captured a fair bit of recently. And then we'll raise a second brigade of Virginia boys, but they're going to have to be a slightly smaller unit because we're three men shy of having a 2,200 man brigade. So it'll be a 1,500 man brigade. Uh, we'll also equip them with, what do we have to give them? Um, Fayetteville rifle muskets, I guess. Um, and then we'll raise one, a third brigade in this division here, and we'll make these boys West Virginia boys. The West Virginia and Virginia boys have been doing a lot of the heavy lifting in this war for us so far. We've sort of made a lot of our units from there. We did deliberately make one division of Texas troops, but generally speaking, we've gone all in on the... Uh, on. Why is it not letting me add a new group here? We've gone all in on the uh, soldiers from Virginia, either West or or not. Um, and I'm not really worried about who's commanding these divisions because I don't imagine we're going to send these troops in to combat in these particular units themselves. So I'm just sort of trying to raise some new units with the recruits that we have at our disposal. Uh, so we'll do two West Virginia brigades there. We'll do a South Carolina brigade uh, and we'll do another. I'm just going to make all of my new recruits in this army, uh, and then we can dispatch them as needed um, to different different theaters and transfer them via rail. So we're going to raise a couple of new divisions here. Uh, we've got these guys all equipped. Let's go ahead and give these guys weapons also. Fayetteville's. Lorenz's. And the rest of these guys are going to be Lorenzo's as well. Because we've still got a fair bit of those weapons. And then we'll do one more division here. Three more brigades. Some South Carolina boys. Some North Carolina boys. New Mexico Territory. We have 7,000 troops in the New Mexico Territory that want to fight. We also have 15,000 soldiers in the Indian Territory that want to fight. 27,000 Alabamians. We've only fielded 3,000 of them so far. Georgia's given us 30,000. 
Delaware wants to give us 2,700 troops. I didn't even know Delaware was uh, pro-Confederate. I knew they had slaves, I believe, at this time period. But um, All right, maybe we shouldn't make everybody here in this Richmond theater. Just trying to think of who will get to Richmond the fastest. Louisiana has 23,000. That would come in handy if they actually landed there. We'll do uh, an Indian Territory unit there. All right. So let's go ahead and outfit these guys with Lorenzes. And then I think two full, basically three full divisions of new troops is probably about all we uh, want to raise right now. Just from a financial perspective, I don't want to go two gangbusters and get ourselves in a horrible credit rating perspective or situation. So... Th Four new brigades in each of these, which is 10,000 soldiers each. So 20,000 between those, and then 7,500 there. Well, actually a little bit less because we had one smaller unit. So about 30,000 soldiers will be raised in Richmond over the coming months. And then we can always transfer them to wherever they're needed. Um, so let's unpause and let's... Uh, Get things going here. National morale is really high. We're going to fight a battle, I think, in southwestern Kentucky once these forces of ours start moving. It is November, so uh, we may get some penalties for movement because it's technically winter, but I don't know that November is that harsh in Kentucky. Where the hell is this? We have an engagement in Washington. Oh, actually, no, Maryland. The Army of Washington's coming south. About 27,000 soldiers for the Yanks, about 35,000 Confederate soldiers between the First and Third Corps. Old Pete will be in charge, uh, James Longstreet. All right, well, let's fight this battle. Federal morale, I believe, is at about 40, or national, national morale or national spirit or whatever is at about like 42%. They surrender at 25%. So um, we are not too far from victory, but still a little ways away. Nathaniel Banks getting aggressive here in Western Maryland. If we win a victory, though, that should secure our position in uh, the Eastern Theater for a while. Do we really have 43,000 men? We do have two cores, so that I guess that would make sense. Thanks, Flying Scotsman. Yeah, I think I'm doing okay. We had a really nice, uh, nice audience going on on Twitch for a while there when we were streaming more regularly, pretty solid numbers, but you know, you disappear in the, in the uh, social media world for a week and you might as well be dead. So, uh, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to get back into the groove of things. All right. Our scouts report the enemies near Frederick. So this is going to be the Antietam battlefield. It looks like we start off with, Three cores on the field. First and third corps, and then Van Dorn's Cavalry Division. 35,000 troops of infantry, 7,400 cavalry. Didn't say anything about when they're going to show up. I actually think we might have them all. And why is Beauregard here? Yeah, we've got the whole damn army here. To start, which is good, but why? Oh, wow, we actually can pretty much deploy along the river line almost. Um, okay, let's do this. I, I don't want to touch Van Dorn here. Let's do Lee, Major General Robert E. Lee. Uh, the Federals are going to be on the map over here. So let's put Lee in a double line and put him on this ridge line here. Or his units in double line. Go ahead and take Longstreet. He'll guard the southern fords in a double line. Just south of Lee. I mean, basically, we're just forming up in one big long line. And then Van Dorn can secure these southern bridges down here. I don't think anyone's going to go down that way, but... There's a little bit of a lazy deployment... But I think we're okay with it, you know? 
Why are all my commanders? I've got my troops facing the wrong direction. Speaking of lazy deployment. All right, Cooper, go ahead and deploy him on these fence lines here. Your division will go there. Davidson will deploy on this road and ridge line to the south. I'm assuming the enemy will have to cross at these bridges. Smith will deploy on these fences up here. Put the artillery up on this ridge line. Jackson, you can deploy there. Everybody's facing the wrong direction. Hood, you'll defend the middle bridge. And then Van Dorn, you can defend down here against the lower bridge and the ford down there. Okay, boys. Where's Beauregard again? Yeah, Star, I guess a little bit. I am not dead glowing. Good to see you, though. Thank you for sticking around, folks. Yours truly is alive. For now. All right, so middle bridge defended by one division. These other bridges defended by more. Okay, so let's speed things up as these forces get into position. Uh, also, there's been a new patch that came out, which is supposed to have improved the AI. I'm not sure. I didn't look into the patch notes to see if it was primarily like AI from a strategic perspective or AI from a tactical perspective. Van Dorn's going to swing south. Man, that's a pretty little line right here. Not so little either. We've got these troops deployed in a nice weaving position here. Artillery up just to the, their uh, flank. Look at that beautiful line. A not so thin red line. Okay, Johnny Yank. I guess it's not Johnny Yank. Billy Yank, where are you at? Also, our cavalry has been upgraded. So we've got Merrill carbines, Colt revolvers, Colt revolvers, Sharps carbines, and Manyard carbines. So everybody's got carbines. Should make them better fighters. Where, oh, where are the Yankees? Where, oh, where could they be? Will they charge at us across an open field? Where, oh, where could they be? Do, 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 Okay. We could cross the river. But I like being on the defensive. My southern flank seems to be vulnerable. Well, maybe. I mean, there's not a lot of places they can cross the creek down here. So, like, in theory, yes, they could cross here and come up behind us. I think the only other creek is down here. And I'm assuming, since Intel says the, the entry points on the map are here and here, that they'll move down this main road and across the upper bridge and through here toward our center. I could be wrong. They could also move toward the middle bridge. But there's not a lot of roads that would encourage them moving all the way down to the Antietam Ironworks. You know it. Um, what happened? Stanford arrived and Wood arrives. Okay, so federal reinforcements have, have arrived. That's fine. All the more Yankees to kill.
the AI usually follows roads. Where are they at, though? I don't know. How long do we wait? I don't have a lot of patience. Send out Lieutenant Harrys and his 1,600 men toward Porter's Town. Don't die, boys. But if you do, at least find where the enemy's at. Okay. It's almost nightfall, too. Well, maybe not almost nightfall, but it's not too far from nightfall. Oh, shit. There they are, boys. Looks like our artillery is firing on them from across the uh, way. Halt the brigade! Dismount! Clayburn, Patrick, go get him. Cross the bridge. Also, Nicholas Pierce, you guys have a really good unit. All right. So Hayes' brigade is in action with their Merrill carbines. We've got Claiborne coming up on the flank. Let's move piecemeal across the river. Die, boys, die. First brigade's fallen back. Claiborne would have come in on their flank, but I guess wisely? They withdrew. All right, cavalry, go get them. Claiborne's coming up. Pierce is going to come up also. Let's bring uh, Lieutenant George Manny. George Manny's brigade up also. And then we'll move John Bell Hood's Texas brigade all forward as well. So these are the Texas boys. There's also some horse artillery over here by the looks of it. First brigade's getting chewed up by our carbines. Hayes' brigade's doing their job. Clayburn's brigade's coming up to support. We've got two more infantry brigades about to come across the river. Have a good one, Flying. Good to see you. Thanks for coming out. He's just starting to see his casualties mount a bit. But still not as much as the enemy. Over 220 inflicted with only 50 taken. beauty of the rapid firing cavalry carbines Clayburn go charge the uh, battery of horse artillery bunch of enemy artillery coming down here Is starting to waver. I think 
Flavor and Tucker Volley, and that's where his casualties came from. Perhaps charging the horse artillery was ill advised. Today there was a skirmish. Tomorrow there will be a battle. I shall give you the op or the chance to be a hero. And Claiborne broke. They break when they lose so few men. It's like, oh no, we break. We lost two men. We're so sad that we lost those boys and we can't possibly go on. All right, the cavalry broke too. They gave a little bit better account of, their sel of themselves. Okay. We're going to speed things up as these troops get into position. We'll have two brigades guard the other side of the river. Be interesting to see if the enemy makes a push. Our own artillery is in action. It looks like we've got Napoleons in this battery. Yeah. Federal First Brigade's coming for uh, Lieutenant. Why is this brigade being commanded by Lieutenant? Lieutenant George Manny's commanding 1,300 men as a Lieutenant? Good luck, sir. Pierce will turn to hit the enemy in the flank. Got more federal troops coming south here. Jackson, move your division across the creek here. Get in position. Okay, you, guys, you guys have Colt revolvers, which are incredibly rapid firing, but they're basically pistols. And he's engaging the uh, first brigade here. With the assistance of Colonel Nicholas Pierce's brigade on his flank. While the South Carolina State Militia Cavalry is engaging the second brigade. And then also presumably the first here. With their Colt revolving rifles. going okay so far. And we don't want the entire enemy army to come south and gang up on us. So that's why we sent Jackson across the river here to interdict this flow of men. Interesting that needs a cavalry commander in this. 230 cavalry. Alright, I should really bring my cavalry up at more than just piecemeal. Stuart deploy there. Van Dorn too. Okay. Alright, so 
Manny's brigade under the lieutenant is in the process of, well, they're about to rally. Lost over 300 out of 1,300 men. But Pierce is firing into a uh, largely golden situation here and pretty, pretty effectively wrecking the first enemy brigade. One enemy brigade here, tanking the bridge. The third continues. Some supporting fire coming in from Pierce. Purse. Hanley broke. Jeb. Jackson's boys are across the river. Oh shit, they're in trouble. Well, Garnett got routed out ahead of the rest of Jackson's division. So one of Jackson's divisions is routed. Ambrose or Brigades. Ambrose Hills Brigade is doing okay here in the moment. And we'll give these guys iron discipline. My troops are firing. Which troops are you referring to? You can see the smoke. So Ambrose Hill's being driven back. Jackson's division's in trouble. Smith's division is also engaging with the enemy. the end of the first day's fight let's deploy Davidson here Cooper will deploy here your 
artillery on those ridges. George Smith like this. Jackson's boys lost about a thousand men, so let's pull them back. Okay, we'll dismount these guys. And Walton, double line. Okay. Oh my god. And we just like deployed in a clumped up mass. Oh my god. I did not want my cavalry corps to be taking on the bulk of the enemy infantry. But that seems like what it might be about to do. Jackson South to defend the uh, middle bridge. We can stay back. We'll move Smith's division south, and then Davidson's also. Claim victory yet? Because that'd be great. Okay. Fast forward and let these troops in the north get to the south. Our troops in the south are going to be overrun for sure. You can see the red just getting absorbed by the uh, blue. Two brigades are whipped. Trying to move the troops in the north down to the south a little bit. Who's, who's killed? Oh no! Dun, dun, dun. No, boys, no! Brigadier <laughs> General Jackson was killed at the head of his troops. His men are discouraged by the loss of his men uh, and morale of his division and is confident of light casualties. General Jackson. Where's Hood anyway? Hood's in there. Where was Jackson? He's right back here. He's not even... I guess they were pushing across the river against him. But his troops are mostly in a defensive position on the opposite side of the river in good, good defensive ground. Or at least in a position where the enemy couldn't bring overwhelming numbers against them. 
the cavalry is what's getting rocked. Or at least I would th- I would have thought would have been rocked. We've lost about 6,000 men. They've lost about 7,500. We actually outnumber the enemy. I'm trying to bring these troops up in the north to the south. That's the problem is we had two full divisions largely deployed doing nothing up there while the troops in the south were defending those sort of bridges or gaps, if you will. Cleburne's brigade looks like it's in good shape. We'll bring them south to help what was Jackson's division. So you can see like the first CS infantry under Powell, they're on the opposite side of the creek, firing at enemy troops here. These guys also, the second CS, the only one that's in real danger is the CS regulars. They're in more open terrain. Meanwhile, Van Dorn's cavalry, as usual, is taking horrendous losses. Another K. Who's killed now? Commander Colonel Jones. David Jones. I don't even know who that is. the division commander back across the river it's almost got us to a major victory here we just need two tenths of another percent of a uh, of casualties here so the enemy is retreating they were really wrecking van dorn's cavalry division here but i guess the the casualties that we inflicted on them were so great that uh they couldn't withstand it. 9,000 federal casualties so far versus 7,600 Confederate. I kind of played a little bit fast and loose with this battle. It definitely pushed harder than I expected on these bridges here in the center, and so we lost a fair number of men there. Does it go as close as Warhammer? zoom in uh the max zoom is here and the graphics aren't as good as warhammer i mean it's a small studio yeah so the enemy has been defeated but we lost two commanders general stonewall jackson and uh, david jones i think it was brigade commander who i have no idea who he is our own cavalry division is pretty much wrecked under Van Dorn here. 3,800 casualties. Half of our army's total losses came in the cavalry. Another commander wounded. I'm speeding things along here because we've already won. There you go, victory. A major Confederate victory. The Federals lost 9,500 infantry, 4,000 cavalry, almost half their cavalry, about a third of their infantry, 40 of their 70 guns. 
for a total of 14,000 casualties out of a total force of 42,000. That leaves them with 28,000 men left. We lost 10,000, so not insignificant. 4,100 of our 7,400 cavalry and 68 or 6,100 of our 35,000 infantry. Still, a major Confederate victory that should lower their national morale a bit and get us closer to victory. Should also allow us to hold that position in Maryland for a bit. Hey, USMC tanker. Good to see you. Stars calf. Absolutely. So once we get back in here, we'll take a look at some things. All right, Butterfield loses face. Battle of Frederick has ended with the fourth corps retreating in panic. My command has earned us a total victory. The enemy running for their lives. They reportedly suffered 13,844 casualties, 1,700 killed, 4,000 captured. Morale is believed to be confident. We lost 10,000 men, 1,300 killed, 2,800 missing, the rest wounded. So in terms of permanent casualties between captured and killed, they lost 5,700. And we lost 4,100. We captured 7,400 rifles and four guns. And about 3,400 men were moved to our prison camps. So I'm assuming these federal troops will pull back now from our front. Although the second corps is moving toward Washington. 40,000 men. Jesus Christ. Where did they get that? How many men do they have under arms now? That's a fifth of their total force. Are they going right to Washington? What do we have there? 16,000 men. We'd be outnumbered three to one. Ugh. Where are they going to go anyway? Are they trying to retake Baltimore? Looks like it. Oh, but then they just abandon it and move toward Washington, which they are besieging. So they aren't actually fighting us in a stand-up battle. They are besieging the Battle of the Aqueduct Bridge. 26,000 infantry, 7,700 cavalry. General Cadwallader. How are the troops at Richmond? What do I have there? Just a single brigade? We could raise those troops north to reinforce. Huh. Well, we'll have to see what the best way is to relieve that. I don't want to fight too disadvan in too disadvantageous a situation. The morale of the armies is equal, which is interesting. We've lost about 70,000 casualties. They've lost about 126,000. All right, guys, uh, this was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel, but frankly, I was streaming for the first time in a while, and it was late at night, and I was completely exhausted. So this is where we wrap the video up here. I know it's a short one. Jackson died. Not a great, uh, not a great result, despite the decisive victory for the Confederacy. We'll see how things play out on the siege on Washington in our next video. And until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm out.